So if you follow me on Twitter or on X, whatever it's called now at this point, you may or may not know that the iPad Pro is my main form of computing. Yes, I have an M2 MacBook Air, but when it comes to running this YouTube channel, running my personal finances, running my household, paying bills, surfing the web, content consumption, I gravitate towards my iPad Pro 99 out of 100 times because it's just more fun, it's more versatile, it gets me from point A to point B in a much quicker and less distracted manner. So one of the biggest conversations I get to online is whether or not the iPad Pro is actually a computer. And to some people it may be, and to some people it may not be, but I wanna walk you guys through my personal workflow when it comes to using my iPad Pro as my main computer. So without further ado, I'm gonna walk you guys through everything, talk about some of the accessories that I use along the way, some software, and kind of give you guys an inside look as to how this all works out for me, but let's get right into it. So as I mentioned, I've been using a combination of my iPhone and my iPad Pro to run a YouTube channel, whether it's this one or my personal one from before, and it all started with my iPhone 10 and my 2018 iPad Pro. Now, today is actually a much better situation, a much better world, because now we have USB-C, things are a lot better, the cameras are more crisp, the iPad Pro is even more powerful now that we have the M2 iPad Pro and hopefully an M3 iPad Pro here soon, but some of the things that I did kind of want to walk you guys through when it comes to my personal workflow before was that I heavily relied on things like Air drop right because with the iphone 10 the iphone 11 pro max the iphone 13 pro max which was my previous iphones using a lightning cable to transfer data like video footage over to my ipad pro it just wasn't that efficient the file sizes were too big it just didn't work too well with my workflow so i had to heavily rely on airdrop which is for the most part pretty okay right some days it would work faster than others some days it would be really slow and i don't have to kind of tinker with storage settings and things like that but now with USB-C and being able to use external storage and things of that nature, it is now a perfect setup to be able to use, let's say your iPhone 15 Pro Max as your main camera lens, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. And then being able to transfer all that data over to your iPad Pro. And now it is a much better world. Now it's not perfect. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some of the nuances that I deal with still, but I wanna give you guys and shed some light on everything, whether it's positive, negative, or anything in between. So firstly, I wanna talk about some hardware that I'm gonna recommend or some accessories to recommend because you will need some of these to really get this to work correctly. Like you're gonna need an extended monitor to be able to push that extended monitor and things like that. But I wanna start with my Caldigit TS4. Now this is the Thunderbolt 4 hub that I personally use. You do not need a Thunderbolt hub like this one because this one is a little bit expensive, but I will link it down below. But any kind of USB-C hub or dongle or you know an eight in one or a six in one, something that you're able to use to plug into your iPad Pro to then extend to an extended monitor, whether that is via HDMI, display port or things like thunderbolt 3 and thunderbolt 4 so i use a kelogy one just because it's kind of the fastest it's the latest and greatest it has i believe 18 different ports both on the back and on the front side so that's the one that I personally use, and that's what I use to control pretty much everything. So you can see that with my CalDigit Hub, I do have it connected directly to my iPad Pro as the host, and then that is connected with another Thunderbolt cable to my BenQ monitor, which is a 34-inch 4K monitor, which I absolutely love. And then you also have it connected to some other accessories, like I have the BenQ light that's attached to it as well, that powers on whenever I have the iPad plugged into it, and things like that. And then I also like the fact that it is Thunderbolt because one of the biggest things for this current setup, which is iPhone to iPad, is an external SSD. And for that, I use the T7 Shield, which is just a rugged version of their T5 and their T7 with great transfer speeds, and it works extremely well on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, as well as my personal M1 iPad Pro. And now some things that were improved with iPadOS 17 that allow this to happen is the fact that now we do not actually need to be connected to a mouse or a keyboard in order to have this extended monitor approach. Before with iPadOS 16, when it was first introduced, you needed to have peripherals connected via Bluetooth in order for this to work correctly, because if not, then it would just mirror the display no matter how nice or how expensive or how new of an iPad you had. So now you do not actually need a Bluetooth keyboard or a Bluetooth mouse. You can literally just go into your settings, as you can see right here, and go to the extended monitor support because now it's built into the settings and it's easy to control that way, which is a great thing to have. But but again, you should have some peripherals in order to control an extended monitor. And what I have the iPad Pro sitting on is one of my favorite iPad accessories or even desk accessories of all time, which is the Kyuxu X55 iPad Pro arm and stand. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is a magnetic plate that is attached to an arm, which is very nimble, very movable, very malleable, and you kind of have it in any position that you want. I have it kind of sitting right next to my actual BenQ monitor, so it's easy for me to see. But if I want to pull it forward, if I want to lay it all the way down, if I want to be able to use my Apple Pencil with it, I don't actually have to take it off. But when I do want to take it off, it's easy because it's just magnetized on there. And it's this perfect combination of being strong enough so you know it's sturdy and it won't fall off, but also easy enough to remove so you're not kind of like pulling the entire desk every single time you try to take the iPad off the actual stand itself. So highly recommend that. I will link it down below if you guys want to check it out. There should be some deals with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the holidays going on. So definitely jump on it if you're looking for an iPad Pro stand that kind of fits into your desktop setup. 
And then when it comes to actual peripherals, I use the Satechi X1 Slim, which is a slim, compact key Bluetooth keyboard that connects up to three devices. I use a Logitech Anywhere S2 mouse, which is very easy to connect. And then I do recommend getting Apple's Magic Trackpad. Now I know it is a $130 accessory. I know it still uses lightning to connect and lightning to charge, but I will say that in order for you to really kind of take advantage of the extended monitor support and also take advantage of how the applications were firstly made, you're gonna to wanna to use a trackpad because of things like inertia, being able to slide kind of side to side, being able to kind of swipe up and use gestures. Having the trackpad has been kind of the best one-to-one -one experience because the trackpad, I use it so often when it, when it comes to my Magic Keyboard and I use it very often when it comes to using my iPad Pro and to kind of mimic the gestures that you would use on the actual iPad display itself. So those are just some accessories that I would kind of recommend. If I were to recommend one of these, it would probably be either the Kyuxu X55 or the Magic Trackpad if you are doing a desktop setup. You can definitely get away with a much cheaper monitor, a much cheaper hub, a much cheaper mouse, a much cheaper keyboard, even though the keyboard and mouse are relatively cheap to begin with, but you can definitely get away with having a cheaper setup overall. And like I've mentioned, I will link all these and some alternatives down below. So when it comes to my YouTube and YouTube workflow setup, it is very, very simple because I am using my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I'm using my iPad. Now, one thing to note is that even though the iPhone 15 Pro Max does use USB-C and does have a Thunderbolt support and being able to do those high transfer speeds, if you directly plug in your iPhone to your iPad Pro, the iPad Pro will not recognize it as a storage device. It never has, it never will, which means that you can't just offload footage directly from your iPhone onto your iPad, which I know, you know, too bad, so sad, unfortunately. Maybe Apple at some point will revisit this and give us the ability to then transfer directly from the iPhone to the iPad Pro via Thunderbolt or via USB-C because that would be the best situation. But there are some workarounds around that that are still much faster and more efficient than things like AirDrop. So what I personally do is, once I'm done recording, and I do record in 4K30 and 4K60, depending on what kind of footage I'm shooting. So A roll is 4K30, B roll is 4K60, which means the file sizes do get relatively big. I do not shoot in ProRes because those files are much too big for me to even take advantage of. And I don't really need to have such high crisp files and things like that. But once I'm done shooting the footage, I'll actually plug in my Samsung T7 Shield directly into the iPhone and then transfer that footage from my photo library directly onto that SSD and it transfers pretty much immediately. Like there's, I think I've transferred about 10 to 15 gigs per video and within seconds. And I mean within seconds, it transfers over to that T7 because it is a very high end and very fast and very efficient SSD. So once that transfers over, because again, it is going to be about 100 times faster than AirDrop no matter how you cut it, then I directly plug that in to my actual iPad Pro. And now the beauty of this is that I do have a baseline iPad Pro with only 120 gigs of storage, but I use an application called LumaFusion to edit all of my footage, and LumaFusion does support external SSD support. So what that means is that when you plug in your SSD, you link the folder from the SSD to the iPad Pro, and then you're able to work off of the footage on the SSD without actually using any onboard or on-device storage. So at no point will I ever run out of storage. Originally, when I did use AirDrop, I would take up storage on my device, and I would be doing some storage gymnastics by deleting stuff when I didn't need it and not being able to save stuff right away and things like that. But now this workflow is so easy. Literally record, then offload that footage to the SSD, then plug the SSD into the iPad Pro and then voila, I'm editing the footage directly off of the SSD on the iPad Pro. And then when I export, I export it directly to the YouTube application. And then I do a second export and export it directly to the SSD. So I have that backup footage whenever I need it. And then I'm all done. So it's very easy to do, very simple to kind of put together. And I just love this new workflow. My efficiency has increased tremendously. Not having to rely on AirDrop fully has been amazing because now I can just get stuff done and move file sizes, no matter how big or small they are, directly from my SSD to the iPad Pro. So as I mentioned earlier, the one thing that I would like to have fixed is to be able to cut out that SSD portion because then I can just move it directly under the iPad Pro. But at the same time, then I'll be taking up iPad Pro storage, which I don't want to do, especially with only 128 gigs of storage. So again, it's kind of like the best of both worlds or the lesser of two evils, depending on what you want to pick, because having to offload to the SSD does save storage on my iPad Pro, because at no point am I kind of putting that footage on the iPad Pro itself, which makes the iPad Pro run very smoothly and very efficiently with no issues whatsoever. So that is my YouTube workflow setup. And then for some other stuff, like for instance, if you're in Google Sheets a lot, this is perfect. Like for instance, if you just need to pay your bills, go on Safari, you know, go on your chase.com, you know, look at your bank account, be able to kind of maybe consolidate all, all your expenses and things like that, which is something that I personally do all the time. iPad Pro is more than powerful enough to get that done. And now with the updates to the actual user experience when it comes to the floating windows and stage manager and being a lot more free flowing, the experience is just a lot better than it was, especially even last year with iPad OS 16. Now, is it a one-to-one -one comparison to floating windows on let's say Mac OS? No, it's not. It's gonna be a little bit different. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but if you're willing to go through that learning curve, then the versatility, the portability, 
the iPad Pro being a tablet first, but then also being able to be a laptop with the Magic Keyboard, it's just second to none. There's no other computer that is as versatile and as fun to use, in my opinion, as the iPad Pro. But still, there are situations where maybe the iPad Pro isn't for everybody. Like you're, if you're a master Excel user, you know, you're not going to be able to do some of the functions that Excel users use on Windows or Mac OS. It is a kind of basic version of Excel or even maybe a above average version of Excel. But if you need to maybe run pivot tables and things like that, you probably don't want to use your iPad Pro as your main machine. If you're a coder, if you're somebody that's kind of in that world, maybe you don't want to do it in Unless you're a Swift UI user encoder, then that's po perfectly fine. There are some instances, maybe some CAD users, but for the most part, if you're in a situation where you're thinking about going to the iPad Pro, go into the App Store, see if there is an app that kind of either mimics or is exactly the same, or maybe an iPad version of the desktop app on the App Store, and you'll be surprised as to how many apps there are in the iPad App Store. There are millions of applications to choose from and at your disposal at all times. Like for instance, I don't use Photoshop, I use Affinity Photo, which is basically a one-to-one -one comparison for my thumbnail editing to Photoshop. Again, LumaFusion, I use over Final Cut Pro because LumaFusion is just more robust even compared to Final Cut Pro on the iPad Pro. So depending on what situation you're in, look into it, Again, it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one for everybody, but for me personally, it works amazingly. And I would say that probably for 95% of users, the iPad Pro is the way to go. And then I haven't even touched on it being a gaming console, a gaming device, a content consumption machine, being able to just kind of surf the web on it, using it as an ebook. So many things that you can do with the iPad Pro that just goes overlooked because people just want Mac OS on their iPad Pro, which is, I think, never going to happen. So kiss that kind of situation goodbye. I think there'll be at some point some sort of merge between iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS. If you've noticed, macOS is looking more and more like iPadOS with widgets and the more, you know, app-like icons on the actual dock itself. So that's just my two cents. Maybe by 20, maybe by 2030, Apple will just kind of merge all the OSs together. And it's just going to be a decision on form factor and display size. But that is going to do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And leave the comments down below. Are you an iPad Pro user? Do you use your iPad as a kind of leisure device? Do you use it as a work device? Do you use it for everything? Do you use it at all? Do you think the iPad Pro can replace your Mac computer or even your Windows computer? Let me know in the comment down below. But I think for me, it has and it has since 2018. And the iPad Pro is the only reason really why I'm on YouTube, everybody. So I love the iPad Pro and it will forever have a special place in my heart. I'm excited to see what Apple does in 2024 with the iPad Pros because we should be getting some stuff with the iPad Pro lineup and getting some improvements like OLED and thinner bezels. So I'm going to leave a link to a video and some rumors down below if you guys want to check it out. As I mentioned, all the accessories and all the software will be linked down below as well. And if you guys want to start a YouTube channel, my recommendation is to pick up your iPhone, pick up your smartphone and just get started because... Even on the iPhone, LumaFusion works, and you can work off an SSD directly on the iPhone now with USB-C. But that's my two cents, everybody. If you want to watch some more iPadOS, macOS, or iOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. We still have a, we still have a couple more gift guides coming your way, so definitely stay subscribed. Peace.